Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you another addition to the, God, I really need a cooler name for this BAM playlist, but uh, the idea of not having any of those special edition models just lying around on shelves, not built and not painted for fear of wrecking them or you're not gonna be able to do a good enough job or they're collector's pieces or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm sick and tired of that. I'm gonna get all mine built and painted and added into armies so I can see them on the tabletop uh, in the coming weeks and months. So the one I'm gonna tackle here today is one of the newest ones to my collection. It is the commemorative uh, Commissar's Duty miniature that I got my mitts on at Warhammer Fest this year. So I'm very glad to have him in my collection. And obviously you guys know I'm working on a lot of Astromel Tarn miniatures uh, lately. I'm really big, having a big push to that to get a really big collection going for some of my battle reports. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get that model built and painted here today instead of just leaving him on a shelf and for a rainy day or whatever. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing what he looks like when he's all built and painted. Before I get into that though, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome and you make me able to do this on a day by day basis. So thank you guys so much. If you're interested in getting involved with that awesome group of people, there's links to my Patreon below. You get access to a private Discord server where you can hang out with all those awesome people and me on a daily basis and talk about your hobby. And you get access to an extra video every single week just for you guys. So that's 52 extra videos a year. I think it's pretty good for being a member of the Patreon. That's any and all tiers get access to that as well. Okay, without further ado, let's get painting another Commodore. And this is the commemorative Commissar, the Commissar's duty, which suggests that he is about to execute a poor guardsman for cowardice. But that's the name of the game when it comes to the Imperium. And he's a beautiful miniature. Like I said in the beginning, I got this guy at Warhammer Fest. I actually managed to pick up two of him. I wasn't a mean sod though. What I did was when I got in on the first day, I bought one. And then I waited until the last day to buy a second one just to give everyone who went there uh, the opportunity to have one uh, as best as I could anyway. So I got the miniature assembled and sprayed. It was only at the very end of this video when I was comparing him to the other Commissar that I realized that this guy's on a larger base, which was really annoying. I don't know why he's on a different size base to the other Commissar they brought out. Um, so that annoyed me a little bit, but I'll show you at the end. So the first thing I did was got some Black Templar and started applying it to all the bits of this miniature that need to be black, which is quite a lot. He's got obviously black leather boots on, his uh, inner jacket and uniform is black, and then his old giant overcoat is also in black. Now there's lots of nice gold piping on this model, some silver details and other business pieces that will break it all up. But <laughs> when I was done applying just the, the Black Templar to start with, I was like, man, this model is so black. Like hopefully there's enough details going to make this thing pop because right now it's going to be a super dark miniature. Blood Angel's red contrast was then brought in for some of the lapel and I think that's another reason that I, I thought this model was going to be a bit too dark because he is missing his signature sash that runs around his waist on all commissars. I do not know why the sashes are missing from both the standard commissar that you can still buy and the commemorative one, no sashes. Uh, the other mistake that I believe they made in these miniatures, which is a little annoying, is that he's currently firing off his bolt pistol when his pistol is still clearly uh, holstered at his waist. Why? I do not know, but it's, it's a little annoying. Uh, Wildwood was then brought in for his belt that would tie his greatcoat. And that's about all there is really, he's just got a brown belt on. I do like the sword in the ground, it just it sets a mood and a tone. The fact that he also has a probably the uplifting primer held behind his back so he's reading you know, some sort of glorious benedictions or he's after telling the poor guardsman the regulation that he's after failing um, and causing him to lose his life, uh, which is still quite sad, but what are you going to do? Uh, Cygor Brown is going to be used for his skin, a base coat for his skin. The miniature on the box was done with dark skin, so I thought I would follow suit. So Lead Belcher is then brought in for some of the other details on the miniature. So the rest of the casing on the bolt pistol, uh, his belt buckle, and then there's some other details on his, like the quill on his chest. I think that's actually going to be gold, but the, the blade of his sword. And he's also got some sort of device mounted onto his shoulder, onto his uh, wrist. It kind of looks like a pit boy when you're painting it. And the other Commissar has one as well. I have no idea what this is. It's supposed to be like a, like a portable hololith display for him receiving orders, or I, I don't really know, to be honest. Retributor Armor Gold was then brought in for the... Um, that piping I was talking about. So it runs down the side of the rim of his jacket, or the seam of his jacket, goes up around the collar, and obviously the Aquila on his chest, the center design in the middle of his belt buckle, his um, 
what are those things called the opalettes or whatever on his shoulder guards it's always difficult to know whether you should actually use gold paint for these steps or whether you should try and do a fabric gold looking do you know what i mean for the like some of the, the cloth details are not going to be actual gold or maybe there'll be gold filigree kind of or gold threading ran through it i'm not really sure but once all the gold was done i was through a little bit of color on the purity seal on his chest and then i hit the entire miniature with seraphim sepia i don't really go into how i painted the base of the miniature i never really do as most people will paint their own kind of basing scheme on their models and i've done a bunch of basing schemes already as separate videos so if you're curious to know how i did it i'm sure there's a video on my channel there's an entire playlist for just bases so while he was drying i got that base done like i said and then it was time to start layering this beast Corvus Black was then brought in to start layering his greatcoat and his uniform. I left his boots alone. I didn't highlight them any anymore uh, or layer them up. Um, I like the kind of idea of them being kind of black and shiny, but also they got hit by loads of the dry brushing on the base, which has dirtied and scuffed them up, which I think makes them look even better. And it blends in with him trudging through the battlefield, leading from the front or pushing from back, depending on what kind of commissar he is. Like I've said previously, Commissars are something for me in the M40K universe that is my absolute favourite. And it is, of course, from reading Gaunt's Ghost and Cyphus Kane, two fine Commissars that do not like the concept of throwing millions of lives into a breach and having them die in almost vain. And those are the kind of Commissars I dislike, so you've got to find the right ones to follow into battle, or be led into battle by. Hmm. So Mephiston Red was then brought in for all the lapel, the inside of his jacket, uh, the cuffs of his jacket. And then there's a bit of pipe work around his hat as well that's done in red. Lead Belcher was then brought in to highlight all of the gold and silver parts. Like I've said a million times before, some touch highlights on the gold and then some standard highlights on the silver. Touch highlights, I just mean little dots of silver on some of the sharper points. Just make it seem as though it's, it's a gleaming gold. As you can see, it does make a huge difference to a model like this guy. He is just looking so swish. What a beast. Time to move on and layer up the flesh. So we have Blood Reaver Flesh is the first coat on the face. Just like I said, we're going to hit the tips of nose, cheekbones, chin, some of the lips, earlobes, anything that's kind of going to catch the light a little bit more and leave some of the darker paint into the shadow and shade. It's always harder to paint faces like this where the face is turned because his big kind of um his collar is covering up the right hand side of his face so it's kind of hard to get in there but i do kind of reserve myself to the fact that not a lot of people are going to be looking at that half of his face that's covered up by it so you don't have to be as careful as long as you get the left hand stage right hand side of his face um to a nice standard then it should look really nice blood rear flesh was then brought in as the final highlight on his skin making him look pretty sharp some Katachan flesh was brought in to highlight up the brown leather belt and the holster of his Laz pistol that he has at his waist. I also did things like worked. I didn't particularly show you guys how to paint purity seals on this. So I've done purity seals a thousand times before, but I did get some Xandru dust and some Screamer pink and highlight up his purity seals. Purity seal. Um, obviously he's quite proud of it. And obviously uses Andrew Dust as well to highlight the inside pages of the book. I didn't try and do any scribble or text or anything like that inside the book. I reckon I wouldn't have done a good enough job. And I think leaving it blank is giving you the idea of what it is. Um, and it looks neat and tidy. Your eye is not drawn to it. Where if I had to try to do some squiggly lines, maybe I would have made a mess of it. And I wouldn't have been so happy. So here he is finished painted. And here is the standard cam commissar that you can still buy from Games Workshop. As, as you can see, there is quite a bit of difference. I'm not which, sure which one I like more. The commemorative one is very beautiful though and I'm very happy to have it in my collection. I've got a couple of still photos to finish it off. That brings it close to another one of the commemorative miniature painting sessions on my channel. And there we have it, a glorious Commissar is fully built and painted, added to my Cadian army and ready to serve the Imperium valiantly. In case you guys didn't know, Commissars are actually my favourite thing in all of 40k. There is nothing, in my opinion, cooler than Commissar. That may have something to do with the Gaunt's Ghost and Cyphus Kane series of books. 
think of that for what you will. Um, but yeah, thoroughly love them. Very happy to have them finished and on that Cadian shelf. That Cadian shelf is looking fairly full of painted miniatures at this stage. So I'm going to show you guys a whole army showcase in the next couple of weeks and let you know where I'm at with that project so far. Okay, guys, thank you so much for sticking around and watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like. The more likes I get, the more YouTube decides that it's a good video and it gets shown to more people and so on and so forth. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. About 60% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed, so you're heathens. Please smash that subscribe button and make my day. And ask me any questions you want in the comments below, and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.